And now, from the corner of Texas and Main Street in Crowley, Texas, we are here. We did it this morning. We have done it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Local Legends Show, episode 29. Brought to you by the Jonathan Cook team, powered by Keller Williams. That's it. This is it. This is it. That's it. Who are you? I'm Steve Brown. And I'm James Irwin. Hey, good to meet hey. you. This, good to see you this morning, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nice. We'll try try new handoffs well, yeah, and, is, and toss around James. this morning. We're, just, we're pulling it around. We're seeing see what's going on with this. That's it. I'm gonna toss it to Jonathan Cook. Toss it. Well, good morning, guys. I'm excited, dude. This is gonna be a great episode. I'm pumped. I'm kind of a big fan uh, already. So to have Muhammad, Muhammad Shabazz here this morning talking all things leadership, positivity, and basketball. Love it. It's going to be an awesome show. It's going to be great. Good morning, Muhammad. Good morning. Glad to meet you guys. Muhammad, yes, sir. Dude, thanks for driving down here and making the the effort to be on the podcast this morning. Dude, this is huge. Love it. This is going to be be an exciting hour. I've kind of secretly looked forward to this one for a while. Secretly? (laughs) (laughs) He he hadn't been telling anybody about it. Did you wake up this morning with the jitters? Yeah, I was like. Dude, it's Christmas Eve up in the podcast yeah, I studios. It. I it. I so he kept waking up and driving to the studio to see if Muhammad was here yet or not. <laughs> if Muhammad, well, I got up at three twenty this morning. I drove to drove the studio up, and checked. He wasn't here yet. Oh, Snuck down the hall. I was, gone. I was, gone. I was out of here. I was out of here. Not <laughs> even here. Yeah, I love I it. Oh, he hadn't shown up yet. <laughs> I love it, dude. So, uh, the first thing we always do uh, when we when we start our episodes is we love to not only introduce our guests, but uh, we love to give some shout outs to people that are watching live. So if you're watching this live this morning, except you, Phil, would you do so much as <laughs> drop us an L in the comments below so we can we can uh, look at that, man. I'm having a good hair day today. That's kind of exciting. <laughs> would you drop a comment below so we can uh, give you a shout out? Maybe your favorite emoji, maybe a hello, Muhammad. Those of you that uh, maybe a sir, dude, a sir. If you're familiar with the Ma- Dallas Mavericks organization, maybe you already know sir. Muhammad Sabaz. Uh, and uh, we're going to get into this uh, because, you know, everybody deserves a little bit of a shout out. So uh, let's go ahead and do those shout outs now. Sir, turn your radio down, sir. Yeah, yeah excuse me. <laughs> sorry, Dad. Uh, Mr. Justin Davis watching live this morning. Justin, good morning, brother. All hey. Right. There it is. Our second shout out goes to you, Mr. Stephen Brown. You are Brandon once again. Fun. Watching live and in the podcast, dude. That's incredible. I, I like love to that piece. Bo- boost that viewer count. It's it's amazing. That's it, man. We gotta get. And some. our third and final <laughs> shout out goes to the one and only Uh-oh. Tyler Davenport. Tyler, hey! thanks for watching live this morning. Basketball. Well, uh, for those people who are watching this morning that maybe uh, don't know you, Muhammad, why don't you tell us uh, tell us a little bit about you, who you are, and and your journey in the basketball scene, and then also. Uh, if you want to get into your latest book, I can't wait to hear all about that. I was reading his Amazon reviews last night. I'm going to fill his bucket real quick. Okay. Dude, everybody that's bought his book uh, was just raving about it. There's one review that was longer than his book, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I stumbled that's onto this book, and uh, I thought it was one where I'd read the first two pages and put it down, and I read the entire book cover to cover, and the only critique I have is that the book wasn't longer. So, Wow. What's the title of the book? Uh, change Your Mind, Change Your Life. Uh, details how the power of your thoughts can change everything in and around you. Damn. Love that. that. That's great. So explain explain kind of the backstory there with the book and what your what your thought process was and why you felt like I had to write this book. It's crazy because um, I remember uh, probably around twenty five. I ended up uh, I was coming back from Mexico. Well, I was I was locked in a hotel in Mexico as I was coming back from overseas. Locked in? Yeah, because I was trapped. Oh, okay. so I was I was upset. Um, Were you playing was, ball over there? Yeah. Well, no, I was coming back from uh, I believe at this time was maybe Dubai. I don't remember exactly where I was coming from, but wow. I remember sitting in the hotel and I was just like, so I can't go home. You know, those flights are so mm-hmm. long, and so I'm just sitting in there and all kind of thoughts is pouring through my head, like. You know, you would think you have all the money in the world. Sure. You have the opportunity that you want. But, like, why am I not happy? Wow. You know, what is my thought process? Why do I think the way that I do? I started thinking about all those things. Uh, You know, just life and my upbringing, um, which I believe uh, shapes us in some type of way. Absolutely does. Where did where were you born? Where did you grow up? Where were you raised? I was born in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Born and raised. And then uh, probably around 12, 13, moved to South Carolina. 
What city? Moved out there, small town called Hemingway. It's a lot of dope people out there. It's My family's from Fountain people. Inn, which is south of Greenville, Spartanburg. Yeah, y'all up. That's up. We in uh, the lower state part. Like okay. Way low country. Probably, He's yeah, in the low country. The low there. country. You a probably Clemson like, fan? No. Okay. All right. All right. No, Just have a check. Okay. No. Hey, brother. You're gonna podcast watch. is over. All right. And now, <laughs> moving right along to the comments here. Hey, brother. You're gonna want to lean all the way in. Okay. I, I want your lift to, to touch that thing. I got you. I got you. Maybe crank him up a little bit. He's a little softer spoken than us. So. Which number is he, Steven? We just want to make sure they no, can no, hear you good. You okay, know? okay, I'm in five. there. There you go. Five, we're good. So, uh, so if someone's never That's heard good. of your name, never seen you, didn't know anything about, don't watch basketball. Isn't from South Carolina. Isn't from South Carolina. Kind of tell us your tell us your your basketball playing day story. Ooh, it's interesting because uh, I almost didn't have one. Ooh. Um, you know, of course, like any other kid, you know, once I rose up a little bit in notoriety, it kind of got to the point where. You know, you you get the big head. You of know, course. Um, my first stint uh, when I went to college, got kicked out of college because I thought I was better than the coach. I knew more than the coach. Uh-oh. And then uh, you kind of, you know, drift off, you know, uh, do your own thing, street life, all that other stuff. And I uh, almost didn't get it then either. Oh, man. And uh, in my college situation, it helped me out uh, because they also had me in a situation where I was going to, play on the USA, uh, I think it was an under-19 team at the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so I literally almost threw all that away. And, uh, well, technically I did, but it ended up coming back to me. Um, guy gave me an opportunity, uh, my best friend, who I'm still best friends with now, uh, he uh, got me an opportunity, and after that I just kept sticking with it. He taught me how to be a pro. Ironic part, when I met him, I was probably about – Six nine and some change, a buck seventy five. How tall are you now, man? You walked six in this ten, thing and had to duck. Six ten and like six three ten. <laughs> six ten and some change. Right. Yeah. We designed this studio. We were like, all right, we're gonna make this studio six foot doors because at the time, you know, you know I was six foot. We I could get through. You said at the time. At the time. <laughs> now it's no longer six foot. Yeah. <laughs> I've grown to six six, y'all. I want y'all to know. Uh, but it was crazy. He had to duck to come in the studio today. Our first guest that had to duck to come in the studio. That's pretty I feel awesome. Special. <laughs> yeah. Like how I tall is special. this guy? And so, do you remember the time you first had a ball in your hand? Yeah, actually, I do. Um, <laughs> and it's crazy because I, I hear a lot of the uh, pros they talk about it, and I'm sitting over here like, yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> you know. But uh, anytime I'm around my mom and we talk about anything that's dealing with basketball or. Anything that I've done, she always tell me, you remember when I gave you that ball? And the crazy part, when I had the ball, I didn't have a goal. You just had the ball? Uh, yeah, I had the ball, and I would shoot, and I can still remember. It was like a, a playhouse, one of my sister's playhouses, and I just would shoot in the little holes inside the playhouse. <laughs> so that's my remembrance of like when my mother first gave it to me. Um, so but, your mom's the one that put the ball in your hand? Yeah, my mom's 6'4". She's dope. Whoa, six four. She's almost as tall as me, yeah, bro. My mom's five two. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom's yeah. dope, man. My mom's is everything to me. Dude, that's awesome. You want to give her a shout out right here in the camera? Hey, mom, Zena Jones, if she watching, uh, <laughs> pops, my sister, everybody. Bro, you're already getting a lot of shout outs. Showboat Nation says, "Big dog." Period. Um, period. Period. This is going to be a great interview. Oh, that's my guy, man. He's he's actually doing a whole lot of great things in the community. Um, with Showboat? all the youth, yeah, man. He got a lot of things going on. Uh, especially with the younger ones, um, getting to him early mentally because mm -hmm. he's a positive guy. Whoa. You know? um, even when I go to – because, like, when I hoop now, it was not for, you know, same thing as it was. He would be there. You know, he always show support. He always show love. Is he a Dallas guy? Yeah, he's a, he's a well-known figure out here. Is he a guy we need to have on the local legend show? Of course. Sometimes? Get out of <laughs> here. Of Showboat, course. this is your Showboat, invite, bro. Come get it. Come You're get doing it. good things for yeah, our community doing, and the kids. We want to know about things. it. Yeah. Love that. This, is your, this is your open invite, Showboat. Thanks for tuning yeah, in this a, morning. He's a dope dude. Yeah. Man, I, I've heard a common theme running through all, everything you've said so far, and it's something we talk about all the team is nobody does anything alone. Yeah. I agree. Everybody I agree. has mentors and people to help them through everything. I agree. You know what I mean? And uh, we were talking with some buddies yesterday about the idea that you need to have three types of people in your life, a mentor, mm -hmm. people that are peers to you, and people that you are mentoring. I right? agree. And so, yeah, what I'm hearing you say, you probably had that all the way through, it sounds like. Yeah, I needed it because I wasn't uh, – I didn't listen a lot growing up, <laughs> so I needed it. You yeah. know, I had to – I always had talent, skill, I always had the mind. I loved – I always loved to read. But I didn't listen, um, and 
I guess, my stubbornness at times, but I always had a lot of people around me. Uh, my cousin, uh, he always was there no matter what. I What's his what name? It, Shout out to your Marcus cousin. Marcus Burnett. He actually had made a comment. I got a comment on He said something about, uh, I think he told me, um, uh, don't make him look bad or something. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, we got uh, some comments yeah. coming in. Let's go to the comments for just a minute. Okay. Kylan Salazar is watching live this morning, and so is Derek Pulley. So thanks for tuning in. And Matt Hudgens, thanks for the two rock fists this morning, Matt. And uh, Ashley Neighbors is watching. And Randy Irwin and Heather Schoonover Kyle just tuned in. So thank you guys for tuning in this morning. You know, it's an exciting thing because when you talk about Showboat Nation, you said that he's getting to the kids early. Explain, explain the importance of getting to the kids early, especially those kids maybe in the inner cities or, or, or underprivileged kids. I think because uh, influence matters, especially in this day and time. As mm -hmm. you know, you guys got the podcast, um, YouTube generation. Everything they do is on YouTube. Shoot, so a, a lot of times you could mm -hmm. tell them something. You know, like even the kids that we got now, we got young guys. We That's got so the, true. Uh, I'm going to give them a shout out. We got the number one point guard in the state. <laughs> like really? everything that I say to them is like one time we was in a huddle and I said, uh, yeah, y'all got that clout. And it was like, what? <laughs> like, they, they don't understand any of that. You know, they was looking at me crazy. And then, uh, one of my coaches, Coach Naz, made a joke. I was like, they don't think that's funny. He was like, I think it's really funny. They do think it's funny. Yeah. And so he went to them. I said, do y'all think this is funny? They just looked like, nah, what, what is he even talking about? Uh, you know, wow. so getting to them early in the sense of, like, we've we've had our journey. You know, we've done right. our part. You know, you're no longer playing anymore. You know, there's no need for you to hold on to that knowledge, you know. A lot of them need the wisdom and knowledge and the experiences Experience that you got. Huge, They're listening to somebody. You know? Yeah, and <clears throat> so if you're not giving it to them, they're going to go to somebody else, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, you know, I had a lot of influences in my life, positive and negatives. Uh, again, I was stubborn, so I did probably most of the negatives <laughs> at the time. But I always had in the back of my mind the things that I was taught, you know, by my mother, you know, and my pops. And so it's just like with them, every influence and every situation that I've been in, how can I take this and make this a living story? You know, how wow. can I look right, at this right, and right. say, don't do this without saying don't do this? How mm -hmm. can I uh, show you this through my energy about this is where I was at, but still show you I can go out there and give you buckets, still show you that I still have my mind. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times a lot of these kids want to hoop, but they can't think. Mm -hmm. You know, can you think business? Can you think wow. uh, ownership? And one thing that I always wish that I had growing up was, you know, my mother didn't know about those things, you know, ownership and different things like that. And so for me, it's like, let's teach you how to be a pro now. You know, I feel like that's why one of that's our, so uh, yeah. most of our kids are great. And I feel like that's why Jeez. this one young man, he is the top of his class because he carries himself with class. Mm -hmm. And his parents is right there. You know, and I believe that uh, when you get to them at that age, they're a sponge. Like, we can grab this, I can squeeze it and squeeze it, and it's going to conform to whatever I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know? And so mm -hmm. they are the same way. Like, the older you get, the harder that rock becomes. But <laughs> when they're young, yeah. it's yeah. kind of like your influence really carries a whole lot of weight with them. Do you think basketball taught you some of these life skills that you carry and teach these kids today? Yeah, because uh, you got to persevere. You know, injuries happen. Uh, wow. You might not, you know, pan out the way. Because every game, you're not about to go for 40. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, know, that's it's true. not about to happen. Talk to your boy Dirk you know, right there. He's listening. Yeah, yeah. He's, it's not about to happen. Yeah. You're not about to get 40 every game. So you, you might light it up today, and tomorrow you might score 10. Wow. But you feel right. like, you know, hey, nothing wrong with me. My shot's not falling. How do you get up and get back at it, you know? You got to have that short memory. You know, yeah. you, can't, you can't dwell on that. Literally. That bad performance can't, or that, that subpar performance. Yeah, good. literally. So what, the, go ahead. Sorry, James. I was just going to say, I love the, the, the mentality you have about getting to them young. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because some of them may go on and play like right, very, right. very high level college basketball or even in the NBA. And so right. it's like, you got two, di like, think about like the two examples I can think of, of, of people who are young when they ended like, yeah, on one end of the spectrum, we got Allen Iverson. Yeah. yeah who would like buy a $5,000 suit and leave in the hotel mm -hmm. every city. Mm -hmm. And you got LeBron James, who's probably a billionaire Literally. and is, Facts. you don't hear about him <laughs> doing anything. You know, he's, you know, arguably the best basketball player of all time. Allen Iverson is ar arguably one of the best too, mm -hmm. but their lives are so different. Literally. I mean, like Allen Iverson had the opportunity to have everything that LeBron has, but he didn't have a coach 
or he wasn't able to listen to anybody True. and nobody in his ear at a young age, probably. And that's why he's broke. Yeah, he ain't right. got no money now. We're talking that's about insane. practice. We're talking about practice. We're well, talking so about sad. practice. He, he probably don't. I, I wouldn't say broke, but he probably doesn't have that plethora of uh, oh, man. revenue. Because, you yeah. know, they get pension, you know, mm -hmm. uh, after I think it's like 10 or 20 years, you get a pension. So. He's making a whole lot of a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Man, not, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah so, it's not the money you had. <laughs> yeah. What 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 you know, here, here's one thing that I that I see is the Mavericks organization was good to you. Uh mm -hmm. what's what's a couple tell us a couple cool stories from maybe the Mavericks organization and how they were good to you. And maybe for the listeners that are out there this morning, I want to shout out to Jonathan Wooten. He said good morning, fellas. Good morning. So, good morning. Thanks good morning, to Eddie Wilbanks. Good morning, Tim. Uh, yeah. You know, Eddie Wilbanks, Adam Coffin, Scott Cloud, thanks for tuning in. They're watching live. What what at the Mavericks organization was maybe your one to two biggest takeaway stories and then one to two biggest relationships? Like, who are you tight with still from your days of coaching with the Mavericks? Uh, takeaways uh, is just the way that they are. Um, you wouldn't expect uh, mm -hmm. – us being a youth organization mm -hmm. and, um, you know, for example, in my place being a former player for you to receive that type of hospitality. Wow. Uh, when I actually met them, we were not good. <laughs> 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 I don't even think we had won a game yet, you know, and at that time I probably was in it like a year or two. So my first year we didn't even win a game, like not one. Really? Like getting smacked by 60, 70. <laughs> wow. You know, and so so you've seen adversity. Yeah, and so it was just like you know, how do you continue to motivate these kids? That's the thing, yeah. When you're getting smacked, you know, because at the end of the day, you know that you're teaching them the right things, but you can't help that they're getting smacked because you're not playing. Absolutely. And uh -huh. so uh, I remember um, I ended up meeting uh, Brandon Barkley. He uh, oh, wow. he came up to me in the lobby as I was talking to the kids. I didn't know he was standing behind me listening to what I was saying, and so he uh, got up on me. He was like, uh, "You coach Mo." I was like, yeah, he was like, it's a pleasure to meet you. You know, we're going to talk. And, you know, all the time people <laughs> always tell you, we're going to talk to you. Right, right, right. Let's exchange numbers, all of that. And so we did all of that. And then um, he ended up inviting us to uh, – because they host, like, uh, fall league – not mm -hmm. fall tournaments and uh, winter tournaments. And so when they invited us, I'm like, you really want us out there? Uh, like, yeah. I want the kids to get the experience, but I know what's really about to go down out here. 80 Spain. points. Yeah, yeah. man. And uh, – <laughs> We had we got in the gym and we seen a team. I'm not gonna uh, put them out there like that, but I seen a team. Do it. They beat a team like I think it was like 98 to 10. Oh, oh no! <laughs> and so I'm looking like, guys, we gonna run up on that? Like, Golly. is this what we? I got to suit up. Like, we gonna play them? <laughs> you know? And so of course we ended up we won the first game. So I was shocked. Like, okay, we we here. You know? And then. Uh, the relationship with them just continued to grow. Like, he stayed in contact with me. That's great. And um, he ended up uh, – when he ended up telling me about me getting the award from the Mavericks, the junior NBA coach of the year, he told me why. Um, and wait, he, wait, 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 wait. Some people may not know that. We can't just can't let just that gloss up. You can't just gloss <laughs> over That's awesome. So you got an award. Tell the tell mm. the listeners right here in this camera that, that – uh, the award that you just tried to gloss so, over. <laughs> <laughs> so the Dallas Mavericks awarded me with the Junior NBA Coach of the Year. Uh, you know, and whoa, it. I will be honest. When he told me, because he was like, first you got to get nominated for it, of course. And so for me, I'm like, okay, I'm just happy to be nominated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, yeah. So that's like, not just something people yeah, say. So I'm, I'm just, just happy like, to be here. Know, when people say that, like, I really felt that in that moment. Because when you're right. hooping, yeah. it's, a, it's really it an puts individual. You in a world. Yeah, it puts you in a big It's league. an individual achievement. Mm -hmm. I want to be MVP. Sure. So being nominated for MVP, nobody cares about that. I want to win the MVP. Wow. Right. And so as a junior red coach of the year, it's not about me anymore. And so the fact that this was never even in my – thought pattern mm -hmm. and I remember when this guy that I knew uh, well I still know him he's a great guy uh, he ended up telling me about the junior NBA when we was getting smacked <laughs> and I was like yeah, I don't know if we should be doing this but I ended up doing it and not even thinking then that this is what it would have came to Unbelievable. you know and uh, when they told me I was like I was laying in the bed and I woke up and I seen it and I said uh, whoa it was an email I said whoa where what if I win this? <laughs> you know, how many people were you up against? The world, well, most of the coaches in Dallas that were junior NBA coaches, um, and a lot of people that I knew that are great people, great individuals, and so for me, if any one of us would have won, I thought that would have been extremely dope. Right, uh, right, right. 
There's a lot of these dudes. One of the guys I know, um, Coach Jay Walk out of uh, Crab Five, he's he's doing an uh, amazing job as well with the kids. Uh, great dude. And so if he'd won, I'd be like, that's cool right there. You know, Unbelievable, man. What year was that? This year. That was just this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this happened in, uh, I want to say March. Dude, April, unbelievable. Like what that. age are the kids you're coaching now? And, and, uh, uh, and maybe you want to give a shout out to a couple of those kids in the camera too. Uh, 12 to uh, 12 to they, but uh, the older group is going to be like 15 now. Uh, you hear that James? So, mm -hmm. uh, hitting, I mean, hitting them while they're gonna, still teachable and coachable and getting them young. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the, like the, a 12 year old to look at me like a child. Cause I'm, not a fraction of <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you the funny part, though. How with, tall with, are they at 12 and 15? We just actually got two kids that's like 6'6 six, six and 6'7. Six, Get seven. out of here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He's coaching some 12 year olds that are 6'7. 6'6 uh, six, six and 6'7. Six, uh, but the, the, the crazy part, you would think that. They got ups, too? Yeah, they can. One of them can dunk. The other one, he's oh he's God. dunking now though. Dunking. Um, yeah. Right now, but he's the, just at his yeah. house, just dunking. Yeah. Constantly. Like How old is he? Fourteen. Is it 14. LeBron? Yeah, he's fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. and he's dunking. Yeah. Unlike yeah. the goal yeah. that you get at Academy, uh, that you can big, lower down the goal, Jeremy, right? Big Jeremy dunking it easy. Uh, big Josh, <laughs> he just he just started dunking. The crazy part. Last game we had, I was telling, leak out, leak out, go get one. <laughs> And but they're not used to the whole leaking out. But he uh, <laughs> he just started dunking. But when he gets into the groove of it, I know he's gonna love it. What does that do for the crowd whenever they see a fourteen-year-old dunk? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, it's a lot of them in Dallas that can. Yeah, really, like, just old ease. news at this point. Like with ease. <laughs> like, all right, man. 14, by the time you're fourteen, you better be dunking. All right. Yeah, they, trick dunks with ease. Like really, like Jeez, they're really man. getting up like that. These kids these days. Why I is would that? Say, they get the training that we didn't get. Really? Mm. So it's not like, like when I came up, six. my cousin, he was the one, you know, my family, uh, we used to play on the dirt court. Like, but when I couldn't use my left hand, he would take me in the gym and lock me in the gym. We left handed the whole day. Mm. These days, they got like 10, 15, 20 dudes that probably have played pro or just are really knowledgeable in the game that's mm -hmm. on them. You know, twenty four seven, like all they're organizations. On, they're on YouTube. Getting everybody this, play pro. Getting this coaching on how to get That's how what to I'm dunk. Saying. And then they got it hands on. So, and do you have some people that you watch on YouTube, maybe in leadership, that you like to follow? Do you have anybody that, that you're a big fan of, maybe in the in the in maybe the positivity or leadership world? Man, I I study everything. So, uh, number one, I would say is uh, uh, rest in peace to him, uh, Nipsey Hussle. Yeah, um, he was uh, he was actually the reason that I started all of this. Really, um, I remember watching an interview for him years ago when he was unveiling his logo, All Money In, and how it was on his dashboard and uh, and the glove department and all of that. And so it awoke my mind then to want to do business and do things like that, right. ownership, and knowing that I don't want to work for nobody or do wow. anything like that. And so, where was Nipsey from? California, California. okay, uh, Slauson Ave. Oh wow! Yeah, and um, uh, of course, everybody knows about me and Pac. <laughs> yeah. Pac got me through my childhood. Um, you want to speak about that for a little bit? Well, uh, his music always spoke to me. Tupac. You know, yeah. Uh, no matter what I was dealing with, high, low, um, the feeling was there. I didn't grow up with my biological father, so that was a, a major hit for me growing up. And so uh, he was. T I looked at it at the time as him being that for me. Even though my pops was there, he took care of me and all of that. But, again, I was a stubborn kid, so I didn't appreciate it at the time. Mm. And so um, Pac was that voice that I needed. Mm. You know, when I was angry, throw on Pac. You know, wow. I'm happy, throw on Pac. <laughs> you know, you feeling like you want to do something crazy, throw on Pac. And he <laughs> always <laughs> settled me down. Did like, you ever get to see him live? Unfortunately, no. Um, yeah. I, I wish it's crazy because I said this um, to somebody a while ago. Everybody that I wanted to see live, mm -hmm. they're not here. Oh, yeah, Michael right. Jackson, uh, yeah. Nipsey, Tupac, like, um, they're not here. You it's know. amazing, man. Life is short. That's why I was telling. It was just like two weeks ago I was talking to somebody about, you know, my heroes in the music world. They said, man, who are your influences? And I said, man, a lot of mine have retired or they're passed away. And, and mm -hmm. I would just take this moment to encourage anybody listening to this podcast, whether it's on Spotify or iHeartRadio or Google Cast or even iTunes Podcast. ITunes. This is your opportunity mm -hmm. to take action. If you see someone that you want to hear live, 
And I know this is this is go to that corn concert, dog. Dude, go before <laughs> the opportunity's gone, man. Yeah, when Limp yeah. Biscuit comes back through best town, best. don't yeah. sleep on it. Yeah, don't sleep on Got it. Got to because you know before you know it, they're gone. And I want. I'm glad you brought that up. I wanted to because uh, I didn't address it on my social media. I just made a post about it. But uh, Big Andre Emmett, um, mm. uh, rest in peace to him. Uh, mm. He was murdered yesterday morning. Mm. You know, mm. and uh, I didn't even heard that. That yet. one kind of. In his front yard at like 2 a.m.? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Dude, I don't know all the full earth. details. I don't think we, but, yeah. Uh, the talent that guy had. Yeah, and he was he was doing a lot in the community too, like with especially with the force that he was, with the things that he's done in his career to give back to the kids for them to see Man. it. Man. You know, I never, um, I've only spoken to him like once. I met him like twice, but we only really com- conversed like once. And um, his energy was good, you know. Um, and it was kind of difficult for me to even – because to wake up to that, you know, right. at the end of the day, whether I know you or not, I know he hooped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I followed his career. You know, I see him here, and I know a lot of dudes in the community that was tight with him. So it's mm-hmm. like. He had game, too. Yeah, man. And it's like, whoa, like, who's safe? Wow. There's you something know? about whenever someone in the community you're a part of passes away. Mm-hmm. Like, for, like, Jonathan and I played music and toured the world for a, a, more than a decade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there may be guys in bands that I just know who they are, but didn't really know them and they right. die and it hits you harder than yeah. like just like some you know somebody outside of your community for some yes. reason because you identify so much Literally, with, those, yeah, with that person and you're like man facts. that could have been me that common yeah. ground there that common and ground it piece. was like that with me for um you're like, like they're on the, the same hustle. situation yeah that mm-hmm. one had me sick though i was yeah i actually um if it wasn't for those kids um i probably <clears throat> i don't know like man that's great being around them because you know you got to be strong for them sure sure uh, Mm-hmm. It was just the way that it happened, how it went down. It was just like, man, when you affecting the world that way. And so now everybody mm-hmm. sees all the uh, business deals he had and all of that, you know. But, uh, you know, uh, like he said, uh, the marathon continues. That's it. Mm-hmm. So as you're rubbing shoulders with some of these Mavericks here as we're, we're, we're watching this, who, who do you really – who, who are some of your friendships that you, that you took away from the Mavericks organization that you still stay in touch with? Uh, I don't really talk to them like that. My relationship is more with the organization than yeah. the players um, because I try not to uh, – like if I see them like at the events or something like that, of course, like sure. uh, around about, you know, you say, hey, Hoopers, are, what's up? You know, yeah. but I don't really uh, – I've never been that type of guy to be like, you know, oh, you a celebrity? I'm yeah. like, man, I'm a celebrity Let's too. I hoop yeah. too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> talk about, like, I love it. I'll, I'll give you some work right now. So yeah. that's, how, that's how I always saw it. Like, I don't really. I'll give you some work right now. I've never, <laughs> I've never been like that. Like, that's We're going to end it on that thing. note right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never, that's never been my thing. I, I never that. was like that. But I love that answer, dude. That's the, huge. The relationship with the organization mm-hmm. for the kids. I um, heard that organization is just excellence from the top to bottom. Oh, uh, yeah. Jeremy Cuban? Uh, yes, he actually came to watch the boys play in the last because uh, they had they hosted the junior NBA qualifier this year. Okay, and so at American Airlines. Sat, no, they had it at um the Sportsplex. Oh, um, but are they building that across the highway from American Airlines Center? Is that or is that the new practice? That's facility? the new practice facility. Okay, yeah, is that yeah, built yeah, yeah. yet? Uh, yeah, it's already done. It's they got, done. Yeah, yeah, it's already done. So like when we did the Nike thing, we was in that practice facility. Really? Which uh. We ended up, uh, ended up heading uh, the Nike new shoe thing they had, the one where you hit the side of them and they shrink to your foot or whatever. Wait, what? Yeah, they had Hold a on, new what? shoe. Wait, <laughs> yeah. Technology and stuff. Yes. What's it called? Uh, I don't, I can't remember the name of it. It's a Nike shoe. It's like four hundred and fifty dollars. Zion, War- <laughs> Zion warm against North Carolina, and they blew up on them. Man, these Nike was these was real different. Like the kids <laughs> loved it, uh, and you hit the side of them. And They're like they conform to your foot. Reebok already did that back in the '80s with the pumps. Oh no, these are better. <laughs> I put this on everything. Oh, they're, these the are Insta way pumps. Yeah, Nike then, just <laughs> launched tech that will tell people what shoe size they really are. I don't know. They've had that it. tech for years. It's that little metal thing you stick your foot in. <laughs> and they Stop it! Stop it right Dude. now. That's what it they is. Got, they got to monetize it. They got to monetize it. They just throw, they they throw a it. Is it called Nike? Oh, there, there's what Steven's talking about. That's the oh, tech. Man. That's oh, the man. tech. Man, that's high tech. Everybody they, knows they, that. They found a way to monetize <laughs> that's, that. That's the new, yeah. the new Nike shoe. <laughs> no, but it's called Nike Fit. I mean, here it is. I didn't even know about this. Yeah, so you hit a button, it conforms, and when it's over with, you take it off. 
And hmm. our kids wore them. You know, I've seen a couple of kids that uh, purchased some, but every, all of them I asked, you know, they said they loved it. Uh-huh. $450. You know, I'm going to tell you this. NBA player told Ooh. me this. He said uh, when he, because he got a pair, and I was asking him, I said, you really paid that much for some shoes? 450 And he told me this. He said, when My you game get, checks a million. When what are you talking older, about? <laughs> You got to put some money into your feet. That's what he said yeah. to him. Good idea. Whoa. You know, he's like, I think he's about 37 now. He was like, you got to put money because he still hoops. Yeah. And so I was like, you really pay? I don't care how much money I got. I'm not paying $400 for no shoes. I'm, I keep myself keep... on like a $50 limit. Let's talk about that. <laughs> if it's not a DSW, it's not on my foot. Oh, my gosh. You know? I can't do it. So, <laughs> I can't do it. Can't what size do shoe it. do you wear? I actually wear 13. Everybody think I got a lot. See, my growth spurt. Uh, I went from like five nine to six five in the summer. Ouch! Did you did you was have your legs in pain the whole my time? My neck. It You're was my neck. My was in my neck. You didn't have like Osgood slaughters or anything like that. Nah, one of my kids had it. I just Man. learned about it because one of my kids had it. He's he was a seventh grader. He's real tall, and he would have bad knee problems. Mm. And when they told me, I was like, "What is this?" Like, wow. So do you have it. problems now or hurdles? We call it as you as you you know, get get taller or get older hooping on a flat court? Does it hurt your knees? Does it hurt your ankles, your shoulders? Whatever? Nah, I just deal with the whole 12 years of playing. Yeah. That's what I deal with. It's a I lot deal of, with that. A lot the of wear and tear. Joints, yeah. Like it takes me – I remember my last couple of years when I knew I was kind of like done. My mm. coach would have to call me in the office like right. hours <laughs> before the game. Stretch. Stretch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have to get ready early. In, in Stretch. Here. Did you eat? Fluids. Like, stretch right now. You're going to yeah. do this. You're going to – I need to see the stretch, you wow. know, and so that's when I kind of knew, like, yeah, I don't want to. Do I really want to keep doing this over and over and over? But when I got here, you know, it was, it was some hoopers here, and so mm -hmm. they inspire you to want to get back at it. There's a lot of young hoopers here that can really, really go, yeah. and so it's kind of like, uh, man, like I want to. Let me see if I can stick with the young bucks, <laughs> and so uh -huh. and then the injury happened, and the, and the recovery is not the same. That's the thing. It's not the same at all. What? No yeah. way near. Can you remember the moment when you? decided this is it i can't i can't put my body through this any longer well it was uh or have you even experienced that i was just... well no um my retirement was for other reasons okay. but uh, uh re other reasons but it was more like i have my days where uh i'll wake up and be like yeah, i don't want to do this <laughs> like i'll commit to a tournament to hoop with some guys <laughs> and we'll be doing good you know and i'll be like man if i go off tonight I ain't going to be able to play them all. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's what be running through my head. Everybody be looking, you good, Mo? I'll be like, shoot. In my mind, I'm thinking about the pain that's going to come from this. Oh, I done dunked three times. I done faded away like this many times. I done guarded this 25-year-old. Uh -huh. When I get home, I'm limping. This 25-year-old probably just chilling. I'll, I'll be looking on Instagram. They out. I'm like, nah, this, this ain't going down. Oh, like, I'm home, chilling. We, we used to call that, like, when you when we'd play shows, mm -hmm. and, like, you'd headbang a little too hard because the show was, like, real sold out or something. Mm -hmm. You'd go real hard. The next day, you'd really feel it. we call that a bang over. Yeah, that's me. That's a bang that's over. Bang over. Like, we tried – I trained uh, – Cause see, I can tell you, we got the top top point guard, RJ. So uh, with RJ, a shout lot out of the to training, RJ, RJ right here. Chapman, What's shout up? out to you. So with him, I try to be real intense um, because, like I said, when my cousin trained me, it wasn't no, hey, we're family. Let's, mm -hmm. let's get you better. Like it was like a real hard training. So with him, I treat him like he a pro. I'm about to sit down on D. I'm about to really wreck you because this is the type of stuff that <laughs> you're gonna be right. going up against. Yeah, you need this. You and already so, got that target on your back. Yeah, being and number one. Literally. Yeah. And when he plays, he sees it. Mm. You know. And so for me, it'll be like because uh, most of the training sometimes is on Friday. So that Saturday, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm not doing nothing. I'm chilling. You're and crying so, in the yeah, crying so in bed. The, I'm at the house <laughs> texting people like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good." But I'm at the house. I'm limping. Ice bath. No, literally, I still have to do it. They don't really even work like they used to. You ever oh, done that cryotherapy where you go like negative? Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. But you it do it like Antonio yeah. Brown with no shoes on? No, I would never. <laughs> I would never. Because I had one time I ended up getting. Uh, I did it before a game, and I ended up getting like the the freezer burn on oh, it. Oh yeah, frostbite. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, I got the frostbite of it. You like you like an old popsicle man, in the it, freezer? Man, it sucks. <laughs> it's worth it, Dude, but out. it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. What what uh do what whenever you're going through this with the kids, do you have those kids that you know? I mean, do you consider yourself a leader? Do you have yeah. those kids that you know that you're that guy for them? I, yep. I feel like I'm that guy to a lot of people. Um, 
I tell a lot of people there's a difference between being a leader and being able to lead. Mm. Ooh. And um, for example, if you're leading and no one's following, you're just taking a walk. Literally, yeah, no yeah, doubt. Yeah. literally, you yeah. know, a lot of people are doing that yeah. and they don't even know it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I take it uh, the example that I would use is I'm a big, big, big Kobe fan. Mm-hmm. Like his dad used to train me, and so I before that I was a fan, but I end up just by chance end up getting him. Kobe, if so, you're watching, <laughs> shout out from Muhammad. We know Kobe's Kobe. watching. Yeah. We know Kobe's watching. <laughs> Kobe's, <laughs> hey, we're nationwide. <laughs> we're nationwide syndicated. So Worldwide. Kobe might be sitting sitting there listening. Yeah, Kobe, if you're listening, believe basketball. Yes, um, sir. But uh, I, I tell a lot of people, he might not like this part, though. But uh, <laughs> Kobe, mute. Uh, I tell a lot of people, Kobe can lead. LeBron is a leader. Mm. Holy cow, you dude. Know, and, Say that again. Uh, yeah, Kobe can lead, but LeBron is a leader. Dude, yeah. that's what James was talking about. You know, and ago. I tell a lot of people, uh, skill-wise, I think Kobe is probably like top three all time. All time. But like the way that LeBron leads, like some people might not like it, but it's effective, you mm-hmm. know. And – when I say some people can lead, like we can be all in the room, somebody can take a leadership role for that moment. Sure, but that doesn't mean everybody is listening to you. Because when you in, when you are the leader, and you're leading people, it's not just about this one person. It's about everybody. Everybody. You know, when you're just leading, it's really about you. You're just leading a group to uh, to achieve a goal. Mm-hmm. But when you're leading a whole group of people, like it's bigger than you. Like Kobe's mission was about him. And so he led by his mission. My mission is I'm going to win these without Shaq. I'm going to do this. I got to show them that I'm, you know, second to Jordan, if not better than Jordan. That's what he was trying to prove. Mm. Well, LeBron, he, I'm pretty sure he got his own things to prove, but he knows, and we all know, and I don't think nobody in the NBA is a bum, but according to those that play in there, like when you're in your hoop circle, you know, like, oh, that dude's a bum. He's with us, but he's a bum. Sure. Oh, wow. So, like, for him and the type of talent that he's played with, He's played with bums. But because he's so great of a leader, you make this bum feel like he's top of the line. Yeah. Unbelievable. And yep. so, and Kobe, to me, Kobe never did that. And I think that's the difference. Um, a lot of people lead, but they're not leaders. And I think I think the, the, uh, the piece I take away from that is leading is about other people. Yeah, it's propping about the group. other people up. Being a leader is about spotlights on me. Yeah. Right. But if I'm leading, it's about them. Yeah, and, and the thing about it, a leader can be, be both. Sure. But somebody who's just leading, like, you know, like you said, is just uh, is self-sufficient. Yeah. You yeah. know, and granted, you can be that great of a lead person to where you're that great. Like, Kobe carried a lot of people. Sure. Like, he's great because of that. But LeBron is carrying franchises. Man, the that's NBA. huge, <laughs> Franchises. Yes, yeah, yes. The NBA. <laughs> All right, know, if you're just tuning in fan. right here and you're watching this or listening, you know, consuming this somewhere, maybe you're consuming it on the replay on iTunes podcast – and you haven't got a chance to Smash. hear Mohammed Shabazz's book title. Mohammed, uh, James Like is in here, and James just said, LOL on the Antonio Brown comment. Man, some good mm-hmm. leadership value huh. bombs being dropped in this interview, man. You're bringing the value, bro. So, James Like, uh, you want to give a shout out to James Like? Shout out to you, James. I appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Yes, sir. And uh, Kylan Salazar says, This is my favorite interview y'all have done. And this wow. is episode number 29. Oh, wow. I mean, Wow. So you're getting some honored, you're getting some man. big love. I appreciate love in here. it. Shout out to you too. I appreciate yes, it. And and uh here's the funny thing to me. Like, give the title of your book for those people that, that missed the first Just part of this me. podcast. Change your mind, change your life. Uh subtitle How the Power of Your Thoughts Can Change Everything in and Around You. So here's mm. what's cool about this, because my pastor always says we have we we have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit, which is mind, will, and emotions. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny how the things that come out of our mouth can go right and be deposited into our ear gate, Facts. and then our body believes it. Like, mm-hmm. man, I, I man, can't, I'm tired. I, I can't dunk. I'm tired. You wake yeah. up. Well, I can't dunk. It's so Big funny facts. that people wake up in the morning, and I'm going somewhere with this. They say, you know, first thing out of your, oh, man, I'm tired. Yep. What is that? That's a confession of I'm tired versus like, Man, I wake up in the in the renewal of my spirit, and I had more than enough Thanks. rest, yep. you know. And it's so it's so amazing because you nail it in your book. And and where can people pick up your book? I saw it on Amazon. Uh, Amazon dot com. Yeah. Uh, it was on the website, but I got you know the, my focus is on the kids, so sure. love uh, it. I do that part, but you can get it off Amazon. Uh, go ahead, and knock it out. Uh, What's the biggest so- value if somebody said, "Hey"? Muhammad, I, I want to get your book, summarize it in maybe three to four sentences. What's the biggest value piece in that book? The power of your thoughts. You know, you control. I, I, 
I guess the easiest way I can say it is uh, you mentioned the, the Bible. Like in the beginning, it said, God said, let there be light. <laughs> he said you know? that. And so I view my life that way. Wow. Um, you know, if I'm made in the image and likeness of God, so therefore I should be able to create like God. Wow. And so that's how I live my life. You know, not that I'm the supreme being or ruler of the universe. Um, there's a part in uh, Psalms 82 and 6 where he says, did I not say ye are gods? And wow. he doesn't mean that in the sense of whatever, but you can create. You are gods, but you will die like men. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so. That's a great, great song. Yeah. Love and 82. so when you uh, look at it from the standpoint of, and God said, let there be light. And I'm made in the image and likeness of God. Wow. Everything that I see, I don't consider like, uh, it, it's not darkness, but you're creating something from nothing. Wow. And <laughs> so the power of my thought that lets me know uh, that I can create it, everything begins in thought. Dude, Shabazz mm. is dropping it this morning. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, <laughs> Kevin Draper's in here. He said, if you want to give a shout out to Kevin. What's up, Kevin? Kevin says, love this one, exclamation point. Shabazz was always a class act growing up when he graphed the teams. Oh, wow. Appreciate Dude, it, man. That's big. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of tight because, you know, those of you watching or, or listening, we got Muhammad Shabazz here, and and uh, he, he's an author, but he's also NBA Junior Coach of the Year 2019. And these kids that he's coaching, he's got the number one, R.J. Chapman? Yeah, that's him. Is yeah. it C-H-A-P? C-H-A-T-M-A-N. Okay, one, Chapman. Hold on. One of my parents says it's called the Nike Adapt. Nike oh, Adapt. The, All right, we're about to Google that. Nike Adapt. <laughs> Nike Adapt. Nike Adapt. That's the name of it. Yeah. In the power of, of live. <laughs> that was <here>. easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what it is. As you as you uh, as you talk to these kids, what are you? What's what's some quotes or what's some some confessions that at the beginning of y'all's games or maybe in y'all's huddles, y'all are constantly saying over and over and over, and it feels like a broken record, but it's so powerful. Maybe the viewers and listeners will get value mm. off of it. Crazy about we say so much. I, I just try to. Uh, <laughs> I know they be telling me to shut up. Uh, oh, that's good. Empower. I just always want to empower. That's wow. at the end of the day, wow. you got to empower. Like when I started, because I started this with training. I was just training kids, and the reason it was called Believe Basketball because it was Believe Basketball Skills Training, and so my whole objective was if you can believe in yourself, I can make this happen. Mm -hmm. Holy like cow. I've always felt like that about myself. Like, would you say you, that again, please? If you believe in yourself, I can make this happen, and that's mm -hmm. how I always felt. Bro, that's it. a true winning Love coach, that. right no there. No matter who yeah, it is, it. and so even with uh, what we got now, like RJ wasn't ranked. Nobody knew him. Any of that. Not saying he was a bad player or nothing like that, but he put himself in that position. Like he drives literally almost an hour and some chains to work out, practice, all of that. Where's he wow. from? Where's He's he out there in Garland. See, what's I'm funny is there's a lot of these players in the streets. Wow. I went to Hoop It Up when I was like three or four with my uncle. You know Hoop It Up? Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, it's yeah. like a big three-on-three -three outdoor mm -hmm. uh, basketball tournament that uh, they have in Dallas every year. But what's funny is you would see these players come out, and it felt like they were dunking from half court, and you're like, who is this? <laughs> They're just people in the streets. Yeah. I mean, there's some players that are in these street leagues. That can really go. That yeah, can yeah. go. Like, and, they, and they're schooling the people. They're I'm doing I'm going to tell you what's funny and, about that, though, because – it's a lot of dudes that probably can play overseas or in the NBA. Yeah. But um, some for some, it's opportunity. Mm -hmm. So uh, I won't say they're not good enough because it's opportunity for a lot of them. But it's also the discipline. Right. You know, and that was another reason, like I say, part of me not really – you got to be disciplined. Like Shoot. getting up – I remember uh, my, my my assistant coach, he's also the president of the org, uh, Nash, when I met him. Coach Nash, shout out to Curtis Nash. What up, Curtis Nash? He, um, when I met him – uh, it's crazy part. I'll give you the backstory how we met. This is hilarious. So I met him at a uh, NBA pro am. He was oh. ho hooping and whatever. And so I was like, "Who is this guy?" Right? Everybody was talking about him. Was and he so a bum? I, nah, he was killing. Okay. He, was really, he was killing. <laughs> I think he was. He might have been fresh off his uh, Memphis Grizzly stand. I think that's what <laughs> they were saying. But he was killing. I was like, "Man, I need to know this dude because I could tell he was fit. You know, I could tell he really got it in." So my first, this is our first conversation. We've been friends almost 15 years, but this is our first conversation. Hey, man, where you work at? Work? Man, I don't work. And he rides off in a Mercedes. <laughs> 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 That's our first ever conversation. You're like, ever. I got to know this And I dude. played with this dude. So I was playing with him at the time. That was our first ever conversation, not knowing we would be where we I are right now. I there was more people that responded you like know, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was him. Hey, that's that's the back. That's the part of it right there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And crazy, it got to the point where like when I met him, I was like I say six nine for a buck seventy five. That summer, 
I think I even grew an inch because we worked so hard, and I got up to like two forty five. What? Like, and we was literally working out nine to five <laughs> to the point <laughs> where I I remember being in church and the uh, pastor would be like, everybody clap your hands. I couldn't even move my arms. <laughs> like, that's how bad it was. And I used to hide from this guy. <laughs> oh he would, he my would come, god! He would come. Hey, let's, let's work out. Hey, pastor, I it's nothing open. personal. I can't yeah, move I my arms. Move. Dog. Like for real, I'm in church just staring at everybody. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's, I, I'm really into this, guys. Oh. I'm really into this. Like, I, oh, that kills me, bro. He was in that discipline there. Like I but remember, it paid off. Yeah, but it's everybody. Still off. Everybody don't have it though. Right. Like it's, it's easier said. You can go to somebody and say, "Hey, man, you got to work out." Everybody's gonna say, "Yeah," mm-hmm. until this routine is done every day. Like the way that you eat. Like I remember when he, I didn't eat pasta before I met him. And he was like, "You got to eat all that." I That's eat impossible. That. Yeah, I didn't oh, eat oh, pasta. Oh, I didn't even God. eat it. And he was like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even Impossible, focus. Impossible, that, that joke was so bad. I, oh, even focus. I, had, I, had, to, I had to. I had to. It was a good try, though. <laughs> it was a good try. No, it was, it was terrible. It was terrible. But it was a good try. <laughs> you, you tried. That's all you got to do. All right. Uh, Shabazz, if there's someone out there that's talking about. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> if there's someone out there, you've already inspired someone. Kylan, Kylan Salazar says, I'm going home and getting my b-ball back out. So I appreciate it. You already got people dusting off the, dusting off the cobwebs of their balls. Oh, basketballs that oh. is. Me. <laughs> Sorry, but here's the funny thing. Here's what I'm wondering. If you've got people out there, maybe they're 12 to 15 right now, they're in the streets, they're struggling. Mom, stuff's not good at home. Mom and dad aren't around. Where would you hit them right now to encourage them to get, you know, they love basketball, but mom and dad aren't around, things are tough. Where would you encourage them to go if they're watching or listening to this podcast? What's their next step? It's mentality. Um, mentality. Mentality. Uh, believe in yourself. Because if you believe in yourself, you, you don't have to, like for me, I don't need praise. Like I don't I don't need any of those things. Like somebody say, you look good. Well, I know that. Like, <laughs> I already know. You can hoop. I, I know that too. Like yeah. I know the work I put in. Uh, believing in yourself, mm. a trump all of that. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? And it's, mm-hmm. it's easier said than done. But if you do, like, because if we really, if we, you know, LeBron is LeBron right now, but if we really look at where he come from, his mother, you know, not having a father at all, She's looked like bad. he was made in a, a, a <laughs> lab or something. But, you know, there's as, as many LeBrons out there, especially in Dallas. There's a lot of them, you know. Uh, and by LeBrons, you mean led by a single mother. Yeah, you yeah. know, or, or, and we don't really even know the details of his life. Yeah. 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 If she really, we don't know that. Right. You know, we're yeah, going to get the story, but. We don't know what he had to push through. Wow. You know, there's a lot of people out there that, um, like you said, that's in that situation. But I think if you believe in yourself, yeah. I think I know if you believe in yourself, uh, you can get there. Like it's it's kind of amazing because you know you you, LeBron had has his mother, and behind every great athlete, there's some great woman or man that led facts, him there. Facts. And you're already being that for these 12 to 15 year olds. I mean, these people. R.J. Chapman's going to be someone that rises up and plays for the Trailblazers yeah, or the Mavericks, the or and 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 he's going to be in an interview in 2024 and say, "Man, who was that person for you?" And he's going to lead Coach back. Mo. He's going to say, "Shabazz." The crazy part, I Coach want that. Mo. Let me tell you, his dad always. Uh, well, he don't do it anymore. But his dad used to mess with me. Um, we had a my assistant coach from high school had passed, and it had bothered me, and it wasn't because because my head coach uh, Jerry Harwell shout out to Coach Jerry Harwell because he, he's the reason I am in terms of basketball there, but uh, he the one that made me believe in myself too. What school was he at? Uh, him, well, he's not coaching anymore. He's in the South Carolina Hall of Fame, though. This was wow. down in uh, Hemingway, South Carolina. You got someone dollared Q Courtney says Hemingway, Hemingway native. native, one of the uh, greatest yeah, yeah, to ever yeah. do it. Oh, uh, man, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> That's right. yeah, Hemingway's fact, proud of he's, you. Uh, he's doing a lot in the community too. Like yeah. he's He does giveaways. He does a lot of things for the kids as well. He's a young dude, but he – he goes hard for the youth. You talked about uh, – it's funny because I've always heard this quote and I've kind of lived by it, but if you're going to believe the praises, you got to believe the haters too. Yeah. So you if you're going to listen to the praises, that means you're going to believe and live and die by those haters. So don't listen to those praises and don't listen right. to those haters. And stay even keel. Just stay even yeah. keel. Yeah. Stay in your lane. Stay, exactly. That's that's facts. Stay in your lane. 
Uh, Chichi Onu says, I've known this guy since his college days. Proud of you, man. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Shout I out to Chichi. I appreciate it. That's my uh, guy's son's mother. I appreciate it. Man, you got them all in here this morning. <laughs> They're loving you this morning. If it, if you're if you're listening live, would you just drop an L in the comments below so we can track our viewership? Uh, we'd love to see who's watching this live. And Coach Mo, man, drop I'll tell you L. what, he's, he's in it. Drop that L. If you're listening on iTunes on the podcast here, we'd love for you to review us down below right there. Hit that subscribe button. We're on every Tuesday, 930 to 1030. And, uh, man, this this is huge. I just found these uh, Nike uh, adapts. Nike, Thank you to whoever shouted that yeah. out. Nike adapts. Yeah. Dude, look that's at this them. technology. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait hold wait, on, hold on, hold on. There's yeah. one right here. Look at that one. $12,000. Is that the shoe $20, from thousand <laughs> $28,000. That's yeah. the yeah, shoe from uh, Back, Back to the Future 2. I'm telling you, when I saw them, I was looking. Like we, The coaches didn't get any. Shabazz, right. they, they you don't think, no. Leaves. Shabazz, look at this. $28,000 for this Nike yeah, I would never do that. No. There's life. no way. No, you got to have life. really I'm bad not. knee problems like, to need to spend my life. I don't care. I don't care if I had a bill. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I'm not doing that. No, that's. Like, psychologically, that wouldn't work for me. But what if it was like the shoes on Flubber, and all of a sudden, like, Mark Cuban's call. You put them on, and it's like, the shoes you're 21. See now, like now you adding some you adding some things in there now. <laughs> now you adding like, some to be, <laughs> to be to be LeBron at twenty one and those I'm, I might take the risk. I might, have I might to, drop a twenty. I might take the risk. That's yeah, okay. I might have to take the risk. That's a good return. Him, on that him at twenty one was different. Like yeah. that was a different beast. All right, what there. happens when you get your brand new Nike adapts and you step in a mud puddle? Oh god, they're ruined. You got to throw cry. the whole feet away. I'm gonna cry, bro. Or like That's you shake a little bit of That's Frank's red hot sauce. Too much money. Yeah, I'm 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 not eating chicken wings in my Nike adapts at Wingstop. I'll just tell you. But see those, you have to take off as soon as you're done doing what you're doing. Okay, yeah, those go. Those are in the bag, on the court only, back into a bag. You have to. So when we're talking about your book, uh, when did that come out? Did you write that in 17 or 18? I actually started writing it in 15. Oh wow! Like the the real manuscripts for it. Yeah, the real manuscripts for it is not even in there. Like the original writings when I first started, they're not even in there. Wow, that's crazy. You know, and um, this one it came out in uh, I believe 17 April of 2017. Hmm. Um, So. it was a journey because I one thing about me because I used to speak in the church, uh, still speak uh, different uh, avenues, not as much because I'm with the kids. But mm-hmm. um, one thing about me, I always I never believed in just giving people anything. So when you read something from me or a quote from me, even on my Instagram account, like I'm not just gonna wake up and be like, oh, this is a nice quote, let me drop that. Like I gotta feel it. Like everything I do, I gotta feel the energy of it, the positive. Who is gonna hit? Mm-hmm. Like somebody's going to feel it. Somebody's so gonna therefore feel it. I, I can't just give you anything, you know? And so this is all about legacy for me, no matter what I do and how mm, I do it. That word right there. So if, um, legacy. And that's what it was about. You know, my, my next one is going to be entitled I am. Oh, wow. You know? mm. so, You're already uh, writing your next book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So can we have you back on the podcast? Of course. Y'all got me, man. man that's Y'all awesome. Dude, awesome. I have a question. So what is an average day? When you're playing in the NBA and you have a game tonight, or like a stretch of games in a row, what do those days look like off the court? Like prep, food, what are y'all doing? You're back there playing rest. vid games and playing music, no, get rest. all hyped up. Rest. No, I know for me, drinking uh, Red Bulls. That's over, the thing. They just drink Red Bulls. Overseas, it's <laughs> kind of like uh, it's just rest. Like you don't really. I know for me, everybody's different. I know guys yeah. that can get it in. You know, they'll play all night. They can do whatever they do and be ready the next day. I wasn't built like that. Yeah. Everything I did had to be, if I go out that night, I can't do nothing the next day. Yep. So for me, if I had a game, it was like, you know, nothing's going down. Especially you got two, three games in a week or something like that. Oh, nah, man. it's not. Yeah. I'm asleep, bro. I'm not coming. <laughs> what, what position yeah. do you play? It all depends on the matchup. Really? Uh, it just all depends. I just tried to. I think why I lasted so long was because I prided myself in just trying to do everything. Mm-hmm. I never like to be, and I don't do that with the kids. Like I don't stick them in a position. Oh, he's a one. You didn't want just to find because a four. Yeah. yeah, just because they're tall. I don't be like, oh, you're tall. Because I shoot. Like I want to handle the ball. I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to do all of that. So right. how am I, how I am going to build up another, for example, I got the two, six, seven guys. I see guys. you, James. I agree. You yeah. got to shoot this ball. Mm-hmm. Like we're trying to get out. Like we play fast. So – Anybody gets the rebound, we're going. Like the guard I was telling you about when we first came, my other best friend, Ricky James, uh, shout out to Rick. Shout out. Like he's probably, man, he's, you know, Nash was the best I saw 
as a guard, uh, but Rick, he was something different. Like, Man, and that's so huge. With him, and he'll tell you overseas, like I get the rebound, we go, and he get the rebound, you know, we're out, you know. So I, I based uh, how we play based on how you know my career went. Sure. Anybody mm-hmm. test the ball, we're out. You got to be able to shoot it. All you right. Got to run all of that. Let's take just all a right. second. I want to give you a moment to tell us what's on your shirt, and I want you to be able to list. In case these kids want to get on their iPhone tomorrow, mm-hmm. and this this podcast will be on iTunes tomorrow. Okay. So, if in case your kids want to go hear their names on an iTunes podcast, iTunes podcast, I want you to list some of the names of the people on your team. You want to do okay, that? Okay, I got you. All I right. You. I want you to just take a moment and shout out to some of those twelve to fifteen year olds that you couch. So first couch. off, this is uh, our new our new logo. We've had it for a while though, but it's the new one. Believe basketball sharpshooters. I, like uh, I want to give a shout out to. We already done talked about RJ, Miles Kimberman. I had Miles Kimberman since he was probably like in fifth grade. Miles. <laughs> right he's tall. He's nice too. He was uh, rated the Mavs top forty. Uh, D, he not with us right now. He's out. Uh, you know some other things he got to handle. But D, uh, the Tyrion, we got Big Bull. He's actually the number one quarterback in uh, in the state of Texas, but what? he plays basketball. Oh, he's wow. like Draymond Green on our team. Big Bull? That's he's a, really like Draymond Green the, on our team. Oh my God. Just every uh, sport, good at anything. I mean, he's nice, too. Uh, Big Jeremy, we talked about Big Jeremy. Big Josh. Uh, we got Aiden Newcomer. Uh, he came with the crew. Uh, Josh, my this is this is just my older group because we got oh, like really? a couple <laughs> things. Uh, we got uh, Mello. I've had Mello since he was young. Uh, who else on that team? Because we, like I said, we got a lot of kids. Y'all are uh, deep. Matter of fact, um, we got uh, Caden's mom. She's on here. So Caden, big Caden, little Caden, <laughs> uh, the middle medium, size Caden. Yeah, <laughs> all the J's of the orchid of Jason. Uh, we got like two J's, uh, and I think a little, another little J. Um, <laughs> I'll give that shout out right now. I hope y'all realize uh, that. Who else we got out there? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but uh, <laughs> uh, we got Hunter Welsh. Uh, you know, Jordan, he's not with the organization no more, but he's a great kid. Because all these kids I'm naming, you would think with all the notoriety that they get now that they would be cocky, arrogant. But you're nah, saying they're nice. Man, they, they're amazing kids. Wow. They're following your lead. They man. got amazing parents. We don't argue with referees. Like Dude. sometimes it'd be, it'd be rough out there. They yeah. won't say nothing. Wow. Like they won't complain. Well, they just hoop. Win, lose, or draw. They just hoop. You I know? love that um, win, lose, or draw piece. And yeah, because you can't, you know, of course, as long as you give your all, I feel like you never lose. Like that's just it's how I view it. That's like, one thing I used yeah. to. You can we take it out, but yeah. yeah, if you lose, because you're going to lose games, you're going to run up on somebody that's just Better. out of your league. Yeah, yeah. It just it happens, you know. And But what did you learn from it? Like even, if, even when we lose, of course, as coaches, you want to get on them because you got to motivate them mm-hmm. and push them. Because that's the adversity. Sure. Um, but even in that loss, what did you learn? If you did not learn anything, then we really did lose. It's a John Maxwell yeah. book titled "You're Either oh, Winning or Maxwell. You're Learning." Yeah, yeah, I like Maxwell. That's big. You know, and so. you like Gary V. You like Grant Cardone. I love Gary V. <laughs> yeah. Man, I wish I could meet you, Gary V. Yeah, shout, shout out, out to Gary V. Hey. David Goggins. Yeah, I don't know him. Yeah, oh, man, look up David Goggins. I, I'm on you it. Got another I'm on one. it. I'm Here's the it. cool thing about today, man. I just want to fill your bucket. We're we're wrapping up and running out of time here. Okay. And we're we're coming on this hour, and man, it went quick because yeah, I could ask you a hundred more questions. Oh, I love getting to meet you face to face. I appreciate finally. it. I appreciate it. I got to tell you this: I'm sitting here the whole time I'm listening to you speak. I'm just seeing success through others. I'm like, this dude leads through his kids. He did it. He's still doing it, but now he's going and teaching it, and that's the greatest way. And I I say this all the time. True leaders know the way, go the way, and then show the way. Right. And right. you're finally at that 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 payoff piece where it's I'm getting to show the way. I've already known the way. I've already gone the way. Now I'm getting to show the way to all these kids, man. And you just listed, bro. You listed dozens of kids that you're having a massive impact on. And I, I we need more Coach Mo's in this world, man. You you have mm-hmm. truly enlightened me and James and Stephen this morning. And you've brought it. our podcast to another level by coming I on today. I appreciate it, man. I know you're busy. I know. I know you don't live close. And uh, I'm gonna sh- his address is no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I saw you no. go. I saw you go. I saw you go. Just a little tense uh, there man. for a minute. Uh, 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 no, but you drove a long Wrong. way to be here, man. And uh, 
I don't know if you got here in a helicopter, a plane, or no, you drove, man. but thanks for <laughs> doing <laughs> it, bro. <laughs> Felt like it through that traffic. I yeah, wish man. I had one. I know that's right. Showboat Nation, this is your call out. I want you to reach out to us on, on the Local Legends show because we want to have you on, too. You're doing great things, it sounds like. Plug your podcast. Oh, yeah. Give a shout uh, out. So we got the Chronicles of Shabazz. That's what I call it. Okay. Um, uh, basically, change your mind, change your life. So I try to take uh, things, principles from my book, and uh, but also – be transparent because a lot of like a lot of people don't get to see the transparent side of me so a lot of people they get to see the image of what I do and how I do it yeah but nobody gets to be around me personally so within my podcast I tell a lot of uh my story my life I dig deeper into that you know in correlation with how we can help you you know and uh, you can find me on anchor iTunes everything um all the podcast hosting sites uh my biggest one probably was uh, when that kid Extentation died. Yeah, and we got yeah. like over eleven thousand views on that one. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah. Which was you know it was sad too. But uh, I talk about everything from that to uh, literally things, words of wisdom, words of thought, uh, the power of your thoughts, everything that deals, anything that can empower you. You know, within that moment, that's what I uh, aim for. Y'all, this awesome. dude is dope. Man, I, I have had an absolute blast mm-hmm. hanging with this yeah, guy. I appreciate it. I, I never knew uh, whenever we created this podcast the amount of impact it would have on us, the host. I mean, we do this yeah. for you to come share your story with the world. But, man, we get to sit in a room with you, dude. This has Let been Let me tell huge. you a secret. I give yeah. you a secret. Yeah. So I'm never nervous about it. It's two things. I Well, one of the things I'm nervous about, uh, but it's a couple things that I've I was nervous about this one. Really? Uh, I'm going to tell you why. So I, I did watch a couple episodes last night, but that wasn't it because I watch podcasts all the time. Yeah. Right. But the word legend means so much to me. Wow. Mm. So like um, being that it's called the legend show, I'm like, mm-hmm. man. Like, And then the, it's crazy, the guy, Showboat Nation, when Nipsey, hired, he, uh, when Nipsey passed, he messaged me and said, well, he didn't message me. He put out a post and considered me a Nipsey hustle in the community. And that hit me. Oh, man. You know, it hit me. He probably don't know that, but he knows now. It hit me, like, real deep. Like, yeah, it's bigger than that. And so when you guys wanted me on, it was like, We handpicked you. We like, handpicked man. you. Man, like, and I felt like I went through your whole uh, list of your whole uh, Facebook, and I was like, man. And I was kind of, I was I was nervous a little bit. I was nervous when the Mavs told me they was going to put me on the jumbo trial. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Just give me the award. We good. Like, yeah. I'll just, I'll take it. And Name so, tiny in the uh, corner yeah. up there. I was, I was real nervous. Wow, uh, and I've never, not, not a real nervous dude, but I was nervous to come. Well, the amount Man, of we're glad you, thousands we're glad of can. people and all these comments. I mean, I'm just going through these comments, dude. You are an absolute difference maker, dude, and, yep. I, and, sure. and a man mm-hmm. of excellence. So, all you've done, uh, go go smash subscribe on his podcast, man, on iTunes. I Chronicles just joined, of Shabazz. I just joined last yeah. night. I'm listening I to all of them. It, back. <laughs> <laughs> you got a voice and a face for oh, radio. Man, I so. appreciate it. Anything else you want to plug before we t- we we'll shut it down? Uh, nah, my book, uh, The Believe Basketball Sharpshooters. Uh, you can go to our website, www.believebasketballyouthservice.com. Uh, if you want to, anybody want to help, we're going to build an academy for the youth. Um, that's my uh, next goal, uh, to help them mentally in all, in all aspects of life. I'm here until they, till I'm gone. Man, like, that's Until so I'm great, off this man. earth, I'm here. Bro, you're tearing the roof off this stuff. And, and I follow this guy. He's up to big things. We want to have you back. Instagram. So we'll stay uh, in touch. Instagram, Muhammad underscore Shabazz7. Uh, follow me, I'll follow back. If you tell me that you followed me, I'll follow back. Dude, that's tight too. So yeah, just hardly tell anybody's me. doing I'm that. I'm gonna follow you right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you tell me, I'll do it. James awesome. Like says Mo is amazing. Thanks for coming. So oh, man, James, watch you. this whole thing. Thank you, James. I appreciate you. All right, y'all. Well, uh, until next Tuesday, Tuesday, we've got a big lineup of guests. We're booked all the way till after Thanksgiving. So y'all stay, y'all stay hip to the local legend show. Go subscribe if you're listening on iTunes. Give us a review. We'd love it. Mo. Thanks, Mo. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. uh, Man, that was awesome. You killed it. So on behalf of James, Steve, and Coach Mo, Shabazz dropped that value today. Loved it. It was (laughs) great. We'll see you next Tuesday, 930 to to 1030. (laughs) And as we say every week, you guys go out there and make a difference. Y'all stay awesome. Peace.